What's up guys, how's it going? It's John, Gamester81, and in this video I wanted to review the brand new Game Shell. This is by Clockwork. This is a do-it-yourself open source handheld. Uh, these open source systems are becoming a lot more popular. Raspberry Pis, etc. The Ojoid, which I've done videos on as well. This is a portable version of that. And what this comes with, it comes with a quad-core Cortex-A7 CPU, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, on board, at Mega 168p programmable keyboard, uh, Linux kernel 4.1 uh, supported, one gig of uh, DDR3 memory. It comes with a micro SD card that's 16 gigs, uh, which you can put plenty of games on, plus with Clockwork Pi OS operating system, micro HDMI output, that's to charge it, uh, 12,000 mAh rechargeable lithium battery as well. So show you kind of what's included, do an unboxing obviously, and then show you how this thing actually works. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's do an unboxing. They did do a Kickstarter for this thing uh, to kind of get this thing launched. Here's the front, here's the back. Don't panic. Website is uh, clockworkpie.com. So let's open this up. We can get some breakaway plastic molding here, it looks like. Again, you gotta build this yourself. Instruction booklet, which is gonna be extremely important. Uh, how to assemble this thing. You can see there's, there's various steps. Things snap together. It's like Ikea furniture for video games. Awesome, okay. Uh, let's see here, what else comes with? It comes with some stickers, looks like. Okay, that's interesting. High ha highly hackable open source equipment. This is kind of what it looks like. I'm not quite sure if this thing comes in different colors. The plastic looks like from their website. Uh, there are different options. Um, there's some more stuff so at the front. Looks like there's kind of a smoky, clear plastic and then also a uh, white. Kind of looks like a Game Boy a little bit, right? It's just like a Game Boy. This is super light, by the way. Let's see what else. Uh, these are the, the buttons. You know what this reminds me of is like back in the day, and I'm dating myself here, but back in the day, McDonald's, when they had toys, they had these snap apart toys, and this is what they were like. Uh, so, anyway, okay. These are the, the buttons. This is interesting. So, literally, you have to put this thing together yourself. You have to do it yourself. But it's, okay, what's this? Comes with nice packaging. These are the boards. Looks like uh, the board, more boards. And there's one more box, I believe, and that should be it. The SD card, some connections, the battery, and another board. I'll put this together, guys, and uh, Obviously, boot it up. Let's check it out. In the very end of the video, I'll share my final thoughts.
okay, I put this together and it took me a while. I think that was mainly user error on my end. Uh, I am not very tech savvy, I'll admit it. Uh, so the fact that if I could put this together, I really believe anyone can. So it definitely took me longer, I think, than average to put together, but I figured it out. The instructions, I will say this, to be honest, uh, the instructions could have been a little, little bit more helpful. Um, it shows images here, which, you know, it shows you how to put these pieces together. But it's, you know, it's not like step by step. It's more like one step is like three steps kind of situation. And, and then you get in the, this unfolds and you get this hodgepodge of just other stuff. And you got to make sure that you got the right cable and you got to make sure uh, that the image lines up to what you're seeing because several of the cases that you see you get kind of look similar so you gotta make sure you have the right one you gotta make sure the battery is facing the right way etc so forth um the biggest pain for me this, the one that held me up the most was this ribbon cable here um to connect the monitor to the board and that took me just uh, a little while to get the connector to connect right uh it was just a pain uh but having said that i think a lot of like i said before was uh user error on my end so don't let that discourage you now there are Two different backs to this thing. There's this Lego type back and you can actually hook Legos to this, which is kind of funny. Uh, and this right here. So this actually lights up. It goes right here and you can actually use this as shoulder buttons. So you can play more games that have require shoulder buttons, Super Nintendo, etc. Um, so that's kind of cool. But I decided not to do that. I'm going to use mine mainly for Game Boy, NES purposes, etc. So forth. Uh, this thing can play up to, I've seen PlayStation 1 playing on it. Uh, it doesn't come with an analog stick, uh, obviously. So... Uh, games like N64 and some games for the PS1, etc. Uh, probably won't play ideally on this thing because it has just a D-pad. So keep that in mind. But obviously it looks like a, a Game Boy, which is nice. It's got some really good weight to it. And I will say this, having put this together myself, uh, there is a sense of pride, <laughs> I'll be honest. And, uh, you know, I actually appreciate this thing a lot more now, the fact that I actually put this thing together. So I think this actually would make a really cool gift for those who are into gaming, who like to build stuff like Legos, etc., uh, this might be make a really cool gift. Um, let's turn this thing on. So let me show you the very top here uh, after I just turned it on. Uh, it does come with a uh, headphone jack, so you can listen to uh, headphones, uh, a micro US, USB uh, adapter. It doesn't come with a cable. You have to have one of those uh, by yourself, but if you have a standard like PlayStation 4 controller cable, that works obviously the same. Uh, micro USB is pretty standard, so I guess they assume they have one of those. It uh, has a mini HDMI, so you can actually hook this up to your TV, which is cool, and your on and off switch, okay? Uh, volume is controlled by uh, shift, and then you have your volume controls here. You can turn it up, you can turn it down. Um, you have your menus, uh, you have your start and select buttons, uh, A, B, X, Y, but depending on how you build it, you can always change that, that button format. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's pretty standard. Uh, these things just help connect uh, clip uh, the two cases together. It's cool. It's transparent in the back. So you can kind of see where the battery is, the speakers. Uh, this is the main board. Uh, very cool. Again, the cables here, kind of a pain to make sure that they're not getting uh, clipped or, or you know squeezed here when you clip them together. So be careful of that. Uh, let's go back to the main menu. Uh, it has uh, some built-in emulators already established. So you have the Nestopia, the Game Boy, the MAME, uh, you can PC. Uh, you can add more emulators. Uh, that's another thing about this thing. Um, it's not as simple as just taking your your SD card and, and just dragging over ROMs. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, you also can't hook this up to your computer and it doesn't open up and you can't just draw uh, you can't just draw drag in folders or uh, ROMs or emulators. You have to basically uh, go to uh, let me see here. I'll show you. You have to go to um, Tiny Cloud. Oh, wrong button. There it is, Tiny Cloud, and it kind of has a H HP or IP address rather, and then you got to connect that to to the cloud, and then you can create your own folder. Um, so it is kind of a pain. There are forums and the community here, uh, super helpful, uh, strong community, and because this is open source, this thing will evolve and get better and better. So I think that's a really cool feature about this thing. So even if you're a casual person like myself, you don't quite know how to do it. Uh, I'm a Mac user myself. Uh, so I'm limited to, uh, you know, PC stuff. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of people there on the forums that help you out. So uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, people are very encouraging, very uh, very open to to helping people out. And the emulators will just get better. The, the ROMs will get better, et cetera, so forth. So if you, if you don't uh, hit anything after a while, the screen does get to a screensaver and gets dark and fades, as you can see. Um, so you get a music player here, which is cool. Um, 
There's some games already uh, preloaded on this, so this is like a free Doom. Uh, so we're going to open this up or launch it. I'm going to show you uh, how this now. Doom. Now this is not. It's a Doom clone. It's not exactly Doom uh, per se. The graphics are a little bit different. You can see the guy's face is a little bit different. Let's start a new game. Okay, so you can see. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and now to exit, you just go to menu, quit. Let's start. Yeah, boy. Right. Okay. We'll go back to the menu here. Pretty quick loading. I really impressed. So nice that it comes with uh, the operating systems included, which is nice. Uh, you get settings here. Settings, you can change a Wi Fi, Bluetooth, uh, sound volume, backlight, brightness, etc. Airplane mode, all that good stuff. You got retro games uh, right here. You also have uh, some indie games. Uh, so these are some different games here. Uh, Neon Cat. Let's check this out. Nice color brightness. Kind of loud volume here, so. Oh, I'm actually playing here, so I'm controlling this thing. Okay, kind of weird. Kind of creeping me out a little bit there. <laughs> Um, it does come with Cave Story too, and I'll show you Cave Story, which is cool. Cave Story came out, I believe, in 2004. Uh, great uh, indie game. Definitely check it out, but it is included in this. It's been ported to a ton of different... Turn the volume up. That's max volume. Really fun game. Um, if you haven't checked out Cave Story, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It's hard to play this through the camera, so bear with me. So anyway, uh, let's go back back here. It's got a whole whole uh, you know handful of games, which is nice. Uh, it's got, uh, so it's also got a retro arc, which is cool. Retro arc is, uh, you know, a platform where you can play ROMs and just show you, kind of show you different ones that are, that are potentially available here. Uh, cores, you can load cores. You can download cores. Oh. And there's different ones here. So, you know, got, uh, different, different cores. Different consoles, MAME, etc., so forth. A lot to choose from. Um, so my next video, I'll do a follow-up video here, and I'll load some some games on this thing, some emulators, and I'll, I'll do another follow-up video to show you how those are working. But for this video, I just want to do an unboxing, uh, show you kind of how this thing works. Um, screen is a uh, pretty vibrant though, nice looking screen, a little over two inches in size, um, which is nice. Uh, Got the battery life here in the top corner. Uh, you can customize the time. I haven't changed the time there. Kind of hard through the camera. It's kind of bright. Um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, pretty cool looking system. Again, um, I'm not uh, the most technological advanced, so it took me a while to put this together. Perhaps you guys will have a little easier time doing this, but the community is great. Uh, this thing's got a lot of potential. Uh, can play NES games, Super Nintendo games, uh, Game Boy games perfectly, up to PS1 as well. Um, so that's, that's great. But again, keep in mind, it only has D-pad. Um, you're limited with the button control layout, etc. and so forth. But let me know, let, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you guys subscribing. Uh, thank you for uh, turning on those notifications, guys, as well, uh, for, for leaving a comment and just for your support. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. And, of course, game on.